welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, I'm going to violently scroll back up through the show notes and look for what I wrote because it's somewhere around. That's it. Humble Tropico Bundle. Tropico? Tropical? Maybe. I don't know. Tro- Tropicana. Tropicana Bundle 11 is out. Why am I saying that, man? Because the Jumbo Bundle 11 is live. Go get it. And high DPI goes mainstream with the latest steamy client, and you're going to kind of wish it didn't. The Vive for Pro is going to cost you 800 bucks, but it's just the tip. Just to just to see how it feels, and Epic drops some ass sets. Way to be a paragon of game development. A Dark Souls clone that's derping its way to Linux can come soon enough, if you ask me. And the primordial screams of PS4 emulation are heard, like thousands of athletic Corvinas getting it on all at once. Big words, big words. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Action. We're switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel. I'm all under Linux, joined every week by our Toronto correspondent. You know him, you love him, Master Metal Sphang, and the man, the, uh, Hello. he was called a legend once, uh, that was before. It's like, like the legend on a map. <laughs> it's like the legend of Zelda, <laughs> but you never know, man. That's one Pedro McTateus, man, I'm broken. Yes, yes. Right, I'm going to do a little format. Joining us every week. With the Shot Realm dynamic to help us form that last, most special bit. Notice Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Gentlemen, who wants to go first? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I have a projector now. Someone just left and left it inside a lock cupboard. And uh, since we were, uh, well, I was working this Saturday and past Saturday, along with Dave, Nathan, and a few others, the um, facilities lady was uh, so nice to let us raid the uh, box of lost items that may or may not be valuable. And there was a working projector there. So now I have a projector. Hmm. Pedro McTeus, Master Embezzler. There you go. <laughs> hire, hire, hire him for your company. He'll steal the copper wiring out of your walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 got, I got not much going on. Um, I, got a, I got a massage book next week. And man, the recruiters are like smelling blood in the water. So I'm going to see what people are. I'm going to go try and find out what my market value is. That's, That's always going to be week. fun. Not a whole lot yeah. to report. Uh, Arthurin, uh, we finally got around to getting this sorted and getting the monitor stand in, not its final place. Got to be dealing with that. I think my favorite thing to be dealing with will be tomorrow because I'm getting a package from UPS, not USPS. That's going to be showing up on a Sunday. Those guys do not like delivering on Sunday. So I, I'm, I'm sure stuff that I've ordered. It's going to be drop kicked multiple times, but something we do enjoy drop kicking each and every week is our horse. I bought some nice drop kicking boots for it too, but they got a little dirty with all the horse sludge on it. The horse juice. It's the steam. Linux. Linux. It's furious. Oh my God. <laughs> hey man, steam client update is released. Yeah. It's a thing. They've done, you know, general stuff that they've claimed reduced CPU usage. I didn't see that better behavior when reinstalling from retail. To, no one ever does that anymore. Um, the biggest thing to take a look at is the two X scaling because that's, what's going to affect us. And when I say affect us, you're going to learn how to disable it after you uh, see what it does. Cause it genuinely just explodes in your face. Oregon, even on a 38, 40 by 21 60 display, which Jordan and I both have, it takes up like three quarters of it. You're like, Oh, this is wrong. This is bad. This is horrible. <laughs> and Jordan, yeah. Jordan, fortunately they just included a nice little checkbox to disable it. Right. <laughs> no, you see, one mm-hmm. one of the, one of the things I like about the UHD monitor is that I can pack a lot of information on the screen. I don't mm-hmm. like windows that take up huge amounts of real estate. And if you want to get rid of that, you got to set an environment variable to turn it off. Which means if you got shortcuts on your taskbar or whatever, you got to repoint them to a shell script that sets the environment variable, and then launches Steam. Which is quite frankly idiotic. Why would you do this? Come on, guys. Just make a little tick box in the Steam settings. Maybe one day they'll uh, figure that out. I don't know. All I know is, uh, well, I can imagine how it went at Valve HQ. It's like, what's the quickest, most dumb way to get scaling on Linux? Oh, let's just use GDK and set it to 2x because that uh, variable only takes integer values. 
That's that's a great. Uh, stop using gnome shit. Just fucking stop it. It just really okay. irritated me because we were very excited. If you've been using the beta client, you knew that th- this was a thing, and it sucked. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, the best solution I've still found is using the high DPI theme, which I've mm-hmm. been using for like a year now, and it kind of gets shit done. It's a thing. So uh, previously on Linux, HTC Vive getting face fucked <laughs> by a Smurf cast. Uh, we we were talking Look, about this thing coming out, man. Yeah, listen, the the trick with getting Facebook by a Smurf is that the they're they're deceptively big, right? You mm-hmm. gotta make sure that you sufficiently relax the throat, or else you're gonna have a bad time with your uvula. No, this is uh, we we finally got a price for the uh, Vive Pro, specifically the headset though. That's gonna run you about eight hundred bucks, which is kind of the original asking price for the Vive with the base stations, and the headset and the lighthouses and everything else. So uh, this is going to be an upgrade uh, for uh, people who have already bought the Vive Classic. What are, what are we calling this now? The o- OG Vive? Vive Fat? No, man. We're Big just going to call Vive. it the iVive. Like, they call everything the iPad this days in the... The, 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 the Vive Vive? The Vive Vive <laughs> Revive? <laughs> and anyways, so this is going to... So uh, there's no word on the actual Vive 2 kit and caboodle because they have the upgraded base stations that only require one and improve the resolution of the uh, motion detection if you add more than one. So we're probably going to be seeing a bundle of that coming soon. But for now, uh, the old stuff, the new stuff is backwards compatible with the old stuff. So you can get the uh, high resolution screens in your face as you're getting the face fucked. I don't know, man. I got to be I honest I with you, dude. Like four ninety nine, even for like that price drop oh. for the MK one. I'm like, I that that's still not my remotely fuck around territory. I mean, you, it, that's it, put, about, it, it, put, uh, it puts it in bucks uh, more than that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it it puts it in the same sort of purchasing range as the Oculus Rift, and that's kind of the main thing because the Rift is just straight up cheaper than the Vive, and so if people are yeah. gonna primarily Windows users are gonna be looking for a VR solution. That's what they're going to go with because they're going to compare price tags. Uh, they don't necessarily care about open platforms or what have you. They just want to, I don't know, play Gorn or Bukaki Simulator, whatever Possibly. kids are playing on VR these days. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a tough sell, man. So your favorite distribution, uh, turns out um, Flibbit was playing around with it, man. He, he's he's a yeah. milady curious. Yeah, uh, Flibbit uh, is a fellow Fedora user. Go 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 us! That's why all the uh, FNA games tend to work very well on the fedoras, except for Py- except for um, what was that? Yeah, it was Pyre. But well, we got that fixed. <laughs> yeah. That was that 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 that, that, was, that wasn't too bad. There, there's there's a workaround. But anyways, um, Ethan Lee is saying, you know, I don't want to install. Um, I don't want to have to install the official Steam OS because it's a bit out of date. I like using Fedora, so he's trying to create a Steam OS based on Fedora. And so he has some steps involved for getting something generally resembling SteamOS working with Fedora. He wants to make a, make like a proper installer, make it just like a nice out of the box experience, which would be pretty nice. Um, that's 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 really it. Uh, it it'll, it'll be it's it's a neat little project, and a couple of people have taken cracks at it, like for um, Arch SteamOS or whatever. I think there was another Fedora SteamOS project uh, on the go, but yeah. I forget what it's called. But I the mean, Flip's Flo- doing it. Yeah, the big thing with this one is that uh, instead of just giving you the uh, the distribution and you just download the regular workstation ISO for Fedora, he's using the uh, minimal installer, the net install, and just giving you exactly the packages that you need. You need to uh, get uh, Negativo 17's uh, Steam repo for Fedora up and running because that's the one that comes with the um, SteamOS session and the SteamOS compositor, which is based on XComp. Ooh, It'll teach based you. on XComp MGR. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so Mr. Mr. Alert raises a valid point. Fedora does have that SSL issue with rocket cars, but that is yes. fixed by a simple symbolic link. So, yeah, I mean, so maybe one of us will add a comment to this little thing for Flibbit to uh, put in. I don't see it on his list of steps, but I mean, it's one line of bash. What are you going to do? There is one thing that he points out, which is you need to manually start Pulse Audio with the uh, dash capital D uh, 
thing every single time. So you might just want to create a script for that. Uh, also, uh, I would like to see the Solus Steam integration snap uh, and what Ike is doing with that. I would like to see that brought over because what that does is it ensures that it uses the system libraries instead of the runtime ones, which are stupidly old now. Uh, so I would very, very much like to see that uh, getting some love. I don't know, man. I just kind of wish that we could have SteamOS installed on Hannah Montana Linux like a normal person did all this fancy new stuff. Well, 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 what would be kind of interesting is like sort of um, a dockerized or containerized SteamOS that just has, that essentially just removes all of the uh, compatibility issues. I guess that's what the Linux Steam integration that, is attempting to do. Or like a really a big flat pack. Way. I don't know. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Could be. Racing. We we do like ourselves racing. And we don't get racists. enough racing games. <laughs> we don't get enough racist games on Linux either. Uh, but no, this is uh, Forever Racers. And I played this game when it was still very, very, very early alpha. The cars looked completely different. Uh, and the developer is like, oh, it's on Steam now, and it's going to come out uh, uh, from the 19th. He says 10 days to go, so on the 29th, expect Forever Racers to be released proper on Steam. And uh, it's it's a game now. It's very easy to get into multiplayer, because if you just quick join, it'll find a server with the most people that still has a free slot, and just boop you right in. So that makes things that much easier. And it's the game itself is wobbly physics racer. The cars all have very jelly like suspension, and you have to account for just how the G's are going to affect you on your turn to go around corners and whatnot. And they have different cars and they have uh, different uh, tracks that you can race on. So it's it's a isn't, game. Isn't, is, it's isn't an actual thing that now. it's kind of like it's an open world racer, right? So you can kind of. Yep. Fuck around and try and find your own shortcuts and whatnot. Because I, re- I remember yep. you. Pl- they contacted us like years Forever ago. Ever ago, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I reinstalled it. I, mean, I, I say good on them because up until very recently, they didn't even have a Steam store page. It, you couldn't yeah. access us unless they'd given you a code to do it. But they got that together, and it's a place you can actually go. I, I loaded it up and kind of went around the first track and it was like this isn't bad kind of made a turn and it the physics went turbo fucking i was like fuck this game all right i'm saving that for a live stream and um yeah i i look forward to that insanity so it's finally here steam's getting ready to release a new game we're all excited about it it's time right dart effect right yeah so we've been talking about this a bit at length for the past couple weeks um, this is just the store page for Artifact. It says coming 2018. The blurb says it's coming late 2018. Shipping mm-hmm. with 280 cards, including 44 hero cards. Um, more marketing fluff about the um, about the game and its pedigree. Oh, Richard Garfield's designing it. He designed Magic. That's a that's a solid game, right? Not really, but anyways. Um, the yeah, and uh, the the big important thing is we have confirmation that it will be available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, our favorite operating system. You know, OS ten. So are so they, they going to go out, out of their way and like use the source engine for this, or are they going to break down and use Unity or something? I think I think this might be like source two, right? Mm. Um, yeah, just because I mean that, that's I think it uses, what's kind it, of the it, point. It uses a it uses a bunch of Dota assets as well. Mm. I'm just hoping that like all the money that they they make from whatever this is just gets funneled into you know something good that's going to blow my mind. You think and we'll also, get Vulcan uh, support? That free, I mean... More VR, <laughs> more VR crap. Yes, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, yeah, you could totally. Yeah, that 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 that's kind of the trade. If you think about it, that's kind of the trading card player's dream, right? That fucking Yu Gi Oh <laughs> cartoon where they have the holograms. Yeah. If they can figure out a way to get that working in VR, they will have so many people on board. Oh, yeah. So many. Make an actual Magic: The Gathering game with the monsters popping up like they do in the Yu Gi Oh cartoon. I, uh, you would lose me to that game. Yeah. yeah. Artifact, on the other (laughs) hand, (laughs) it's like three games of Hearthstone happening at once because you have the three lanes in Dota, and that's kind of the shtick they're shticking to. Um, It's, I don't know, I guess I'll have to play it to see it, but uh, they say uh, 2018, so 2022. Right. 
Well, I don't know. I'm. It's definitely a thing that's coming out. It's a card game. Never played a card game. Uh, I guess we'll have to Go play fish. it at some point. And, uh, but Pedro, if I was willing to bet money, I thought we would have lost you to this game. Oh, uh, you may still, because I finished the demo. I finished the demo with a quickness when they put it out. Just like, oh, yeah, we're doing a Kickstarter, and we have a demo, and it's on Linux. It's like, okay. Oh, crap. This is Dark Souls in space. Right. Hold on. <laughs> and I played through Sparkle, it. And... Sparkles. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, they do an interesting thing, which is every time you die and you respawn, you supposedly go to a different dimension. And that different dimension maybe has a door open that was uh, locked on the the one you started. So not only are they just using death as a game mechanic like they already do in Dark Souls, they're improving on it. They're building on it. And that's good. That's introducing something new to the Souls formula. And hopefully, hopefully, because we need a Dark Souls type game on Linux, because let's face it, Bound by Flame wasn't that good. <laughs> as much as I wanted like the Surge and the Technomancer to come to Linux, mm -hmm. uh, those are Souls-like, yes, but they're not Dark Souls. This... This is basically Dark Souls, sci-fi Dark Souls. So I'm totally, totally down for that. The the, the whole death mechanic though. actually seems <laughs> seems interesting, and it would be kind of it is kind of neat, and would be an interesting sort of exploration of the roguelike genre to like, mm -hmm. uh, or to bring in some roguelike elements to say like, uh, after you die, the enemy placements are completely moved. So it's more about skill than position and memorization and whatnot. Yeah. That, so that, that that's that's kind of interesting. Uh, if you scroll down at the system requirements for this fucker, though, it mm -hmm. only requires a two gig stick of RAM. So technology is amazing. <laughs> it is pretty good. And, I, and you you got to give it credit because this is this was a Kickstarter game that actually came to market. That is that is a rarity in these days. They had a demo. They they pretty much did it right. They had a demo. They sent they 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 sent us a little uh, request with the demo attached, and then mm -hmm. a year a year and a bit later. Lo and behold, no green light, no nothing. Here's our product. Take note, developers. Well, in all yeah, fairness, and, uh, they, it's like, this is our product later in next year. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, early 2019. But uh, the other big thing on this one is that, you know how in Dark Souls, for those of you who have played it, multiplayer is a bit iffy because you have to do like the summoning to your world thing and it it can be hit or miss. This one is going to have proper multiplayer, so I'm totally looking forward to that. <laughs> so, so like the other person can control well, the it's, camera. It's going to be split screen. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's it, split screen though. I don't I don't think there's network multiplayer. Is there? Yes, yes there, there is. is. Yeah, it's going to be. Oh, thing. But gentlemen, right. we need to talk about the real breakout hit of 2018. <laughs> that is Pizza Connection <laughs> was, was, 3. Was it breakout? So, oh. Pizza Connection. Uh, apparently, it's a a cult hit series according to the description of the game and uh, they released number three to basically negative reviews uh, the people were saying i was reading the uh, the steam reviews for this it's like oh it's, so it's a cult hit and it's uh, overwhelmingly negative okay let's uh, let's have a look at that and people are saying oh yeah they removed all the depth from it the thing that uh, sort of set it apart and they just made it just a regular crappy Android style game on Steam. Holy and... wall of text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, I guess releasing a sequel to a cult hit uh, by attaching the number three to the end is not such a good idea. As it turns out, uh, if you don't do it right, the fans are going to tear you a new asshole. Fallout well, I, I mean... I mean, Pizza Connection <laughs> 2 ended on a really nasty cliffhanger. Right. And the fact that they didn't resolve it for Pizza Connection 3 is probably a big reason why all those negative reviews are being... I mean, I don't know how they could ever hope to. That's like Terminator 3, man. You shouldn't have made it. Pizza Connect... Uh, yeah, Connection 2. That, that, was, that, that was the perfect, perfect Pizza Connection. Um, yeah. I'm sure Pizza Dude is heartbroken. I know, right? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I have nothing against the game. I didn't know it existed. And apparently it's some cult thing, which means like six people fucking played it a lot. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how it got to three. I was like, what the fuck do you mean three? I, I initially thought it was like, oh, is, is this memes or are we just fucking with old man Vin? We're just naming things three now. And uh, no, no, it's apparently a thing, man. People are. Yeah. Coming, coming soon. Brick Simulator 3. 
Yeah. The brickening. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, <laughs> so we all wish our lawns were emo so they would cut themselves. <laughs> Only you wish that. Only you wish that, Finn. Uh, I don't, but I don't this... have a lawn. I live in an apartment building. <laughs> I live in a teeny tiny place that is basically a trailer park. Well, uh, this is Lethal Wands, on the other hand. It's a competitive mowing blood sport. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You go around with your um, lawnmower, you get points by mowing the lawn, and you uh, have to try and kill the other people so they can't mow the lawn while you mow the lawn. It doesn't really so... strike me as particularly fun that idea but it could be good it's for a, a laugh it's it's a party game it reminds me of kind of that like safe for work uh safe for work version of that game where you literally play as dicks and you're trying to fuck the other players in the assholes oh yes jordan you have a very interesting <laughs> genital point. jousting and very valid genital jousting that, that that's what it's called this is this is an actual game you can buy on steam it's not on linux yes so you might if you're curious enough you might want to burn a heretic purchase i think the chairs will forgive you just because it's a fucking game right. where you try to fuck other people in the ass i don't know um I, I I just like the little thing they added for like oh yeah you can you can have up to four players on a single keyboard I, I saw the layout and I said yeah. to myself this is a great way to get your fingers broken by less than scrupulous players <laughs> <laughs> why are we in versus mode what, I don't I don't know I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna punch you now. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, I was going to say, you have a very valid point on that keyboard layout, especially trying to fit four people on one keyboard, never has worked in the history of fucking ever. And yeah, you would definitely punch somebody if you, you don't play competitive games close to each other, or you don't do it twice, I should say. Oh, oh, uh, oh dude, it, apparently they have eight player co-op where two players each have to share a controller. <laughs> That you see, that's just some motherfuckers knowingly, and I emphasize knowingly being malicious. Uh, I kind of want to live stream this with like a like in person with the live cam because that would be fucking hilarious. Oh, jeez! All right, let's get let's get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> okay, coming up next, uh, it's Operation Jumbo Drop as we uh, decide to raise sanctions on some sort of unspecified tropical country, and also. Yet another Half-Life remake? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's Jordan. Don't worry, he'll be coming back soon, hopefully without his clothes on, because I'm going to keep riding that horse until it's about as uh, run down as our steamy Linux news. But this is not that. This is where we whore ourselves out to you, the lovely people making this show well, uh, making this show have a bit what of he's a trying budget. to say, ladies and gentlemen, is you're the reason we keep showing back <laughs> up, man. Listen, Pretty I'm much. I'm still I'm still I'm still trying to come to terms with Pedro's like uncontrollable attraction to my naked form. I mean, I wouldn't really call it a it's form. A, um, it's it's a, it's an amorphous right. blob. I mean, yeah, sure, a more amorphous blob. I can we can hoist the two of you over his head. It's fine. Uh, um... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, I didn't level, listen, this, man. Listen, I didn't say it was a weak lo lovely, blob. Yeah, um, <laughs> lovely discourse like this can be funded week after week by going to uh, to linuxgamecast.com, clicking that support the shows and. Uh, button. We got all sorts of buttons for you to press. Enter your credit card number afterwards. It's good stuff. Amazon affiliate links, New Egg affiliate links, uh, Humble partner links. If you feel like uh, going for the Humble Monthly Bundle, we get a recurring cut. But the better way to give us monthly money is to head on over to patreon.com slash linuxgamecast, where all the cool kids go to toss money in our general directions. Ooh, and you get, That's you, a you, big number. Yeah, that's, that, that's a big number. And it means that we also crossed a goal. We have, If we can close out the month with uh, that number high, then... Um, Miss uh, Jill Linux Girl will be showing up. Emmy Award winner Jill Linux Girl will be gracing our presence at uh, on the Wednesday Weekly Daily Wednesday show. I've been I've been contractually informed that, or I've been I am contractually obligated to inform you that this is basically one person saying I want to see what Jill on Weekly Daily Wednesday. So this may not be a sustainable thing. So if you do want to see her on Weekly Daily Wednesday, maybe up your pledge a buck. Who knows? Um, you get to get do cool stuff like be our bosses. You get to show up on the, the newly minted Friday night stream that Ven is testing. Mm -hmm. We got 
uh, live streams now five days a week. For those of you, thank all thanks to the people who give us money through this lovely, lovely service run by a bunch of psychopaths. Um, what we we got some people we got to thank. Um, Testus Maximus is our latest Patreon. As uh, also Betty increased her pledge. Maybe it's like Betty from Kung Pao Enter the Fist, though, and it's actually his ancient Kung Fu wizard. Hashtag go and for chucks. Course, go for chucks, man. <laughs> I need 5,000 pounds of nuts. That's a lot of nuts. <laughs> um, and uh, we got we to thank Artharin for the lo mo lovely monitor stand. You can see me waving my hands on the bottom right there. I'm punching up, punching Pedro in the dick. Woo! Peace among worlds, bitches. Yeah. Um, that was brought to you by uh, our lovely fucko Artharin, who uh, shows up on Frank's fuck wall. Where's Frank today, this week? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on seeing if we can get the live feed. I don't think we have audio yet, but. Yeah, okay. Live via satellite. Oh, oh said, Frank is at the gym. Nice. Oh, right. man. Oh, yeah, oh. Frank, Frank's Curl, uh... curl, Curls for the girls, man. Damn, curls Frank. For the girls. Why do you get to hang out with all the sexy ones? Uh, but he, Frank's always showing off uh, the Frank's fuckos, man. Fuck Wall 2.0, man. That's where your name will forever be immortalized in every incarnation of the studio, hopefully involving something that's slightly better than cardboard cutouts, but we work with the budget we have now. It is real. So, um, that that was hot. Go back and watch the video version, since most of you listen on audio. And, oh man, I'm, oh. I'm 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 schwitzing right here. You you, you you can cook a chicken in between my thighs. Just saying. But uh, spe speaking of oh. great deals <laughs> and and uh, and uh, humble affiliate links, then there's a new bundle out. You you just actually did a bad touch over the internet, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get ready to humble. Yes, it's a thing, man. Let's do it. The Jumbo 11 Sim Dictator Bundle is out. Pay $1 or more, you get Dominia Kingdom, Rusty Lake Roots. Eh, I'm not seeing a bunch of... Well, Kingdom. I tried Kingdom. That's been in a previous bundle. But it's got a lot of mm -hmm. Tropico love in this. Uh, with Tropico Lots Espionage, Waterborne, Orwell... As for Linux, I don't know about that. I uh, kind of looked at it in plus plus. Uh, it's not on Linux and more than three days and 22 hours. But hey, we have that affiliate link. If you click on that, you can kick us some change and help us do something that we never thought we'd be able to say, raise money for charity. We've raised over like $131 last time I checked mm -hmm. for charity. Well, with plus, I Linux. mean, if you want to support game development on Linux, Hemi um, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they've rocked on. They have their fully cross-platform engine. They put out some lovely titles with surviving brand... Surviving brand, brand. Victor Mars. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, all, all, the, the hit games from from Hemimont. I, I didn't yeah, know you, you got a uh, surviving brand. I was thinking like brand from Breaking Bad. Now it's like, oh shit, where's this going? Is this yeah, sir, this surviving brand? brand Stark from Game of Thrones? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You get, yeah, you can you can get all the Tropico for five bucks. So that's a pretty decent deal. You can help us out. You can help them out. You can help some charity people out. But you don't get to write that off though. All those write offs go to humble no. because humble. Mm -hmm. um yeah it's, it's, it's a decent deal if you're into a strategy indeed and um there is one game at the 15 uh dollar level which is abduction which i was looking forward to long long time ago when the uh cyan was on kickstarter with it and then they said nah yeah we're not gonna do linux we're going to do vr but we're not gonna do linux so hey cyan a uh, fuck you okay that's Pedro Mateus. Magenta's better anyways. <laughs> Maybe it'll come to the PS4. <laughs> Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Heck, we don't even know if this particular emulator works because it just came out, basically. Uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it started apparently five months ago, according to the initial commit on their GitHub page. This is the experimental PlayStation 4 emulator Orbital as they call it. And it is it is virtualization based. And right now, the only thing that you can actually uh, get it to run is the PS4 kernel. If you have a PS4 with version 4.55 and uh, 5.00, you can dump your kernel. Uh, they kind of sort of explain how to do it. If you go through the SH files uh, in the repo, they explain how you can do that. Uh, the system requirements uh, mention Windows, Linux, an x86-64 CPU with AVX or AVX2 extensions, which means anything uh, released in the past 10 years. Uh, 
uh, 16 gigs of RAM, so that's sizable. And graphics, well, that's TBD, because uh, right now it doesn't play any games. And it's not end-user-friendly. Your end-user should nope. not be downloading Clearly this. Clearly states it's... on the uh, GitHub page, man. It's yeah. like, yo, peace out. Don't don't try to mess with this. This is a work in progress, but... I mean, Jordan, I, I do believe this is going to get a little interesting. Maybe not as crazy as our favorite psychopaths with the PS3 emulation, but this could get interesting being it's they're emulating x86, even though you got a good point, man. Yeah, no, the, uh, it's not. Well, it, it's not so much as uh, emulating x86 because QMU actually has hooks for well, uh, yeah. ETX VTD and, and the what ADA I equivalent. Meant. So you, mm-hmm. Yes, I know, but for the people who are less educated than you, Mr. Venstone, with your master's degree and your fancy arch cup and your lackady hairdo and sparkly cowboy boots, um, <laughs> look, look, how, look, look how sparkly he is. He's just so shiny. I just want to. I just want to lick him. Anyways, uh, the all the all the emulation is being done in QM, which is interesting because it allows a lot of the heavy lifting to be offloaded to the underlying CPU. Period. Um, and it may uh, it may uh, have to do with the fact that, or it may actually be necessary, considering uh, the strange hardware design that the PlayStation Four has. Uh, if you remember when we were talking about the fail overflow nonsense uh, mm-hmm. last year, when they're trying to get Linux running on there, they uh, revealed that it, while it is x86 based, PC has a specific definition involving like serial ports and interfaces and interrupts and whatnot. PlayStation Four doesn't actually follow that all so much. Um, there's a bunch of interceding chips that uh, the PlayStation 4 uses. So some level of emulation is probably going to be required. And Q- QMU is a decent starting point, considering that um, in terms of like performance, it gets about 90 to 95% parity mm-hmm. with native x86, mm-hmm. which is really good for a freaking software processor. Yeah, man. I, and, um, I, go ahead. Uh, since we're... Uh, the, uh, the, the big thing with the PS4 was how different the south bridge uh was from your standard x86 uh 64 pc maybe if it's just the south bridge bits we could actually have some really good like 90 95 percent performance parity when this particular emulator gets to the point where it can actually play games that would be now, awesome. now the, the 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 interesting thing too is because everything seems to be tightly coupled coupled to the AMD apu that's mm-hmm. present on the um on the, the PlayStation 4. Jaguar. I'm, yeah. yeah, the Jaguar. Jaguar. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what the... Uh, what... <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> we we, we got to trim your faces a little bit. I can see some shit collecting on the sides. Um, Girl, the, uh, the, 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 the interesting thing is how, how much heavy lifting is the emulation going to have to do in order to transpose like specific hardware-specific uh, AMD APU quirks to a more traditional GPU that could be NVIDIA, it could be Intel, it could be another AMD one. You, mm-hmm. It's I don't know, man. questions I mean, that will need to be answered down the road in development. Definitely leads me to, I, I think this is going to be a lot of smashing head against wall, head against wall, head against wall, then there'll be that uh, fucking ha moment. Then it's like, yo, everything works now. Just go play all your PS4 games. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> But it is good to see it supporting Linux along with that other operating system. And um, okay, Uh, let's make a bet with this because we're going to talk about Zen because we love talking about Zen. And I always like to think, hey, man, do you want to bet that this is from tweaktown.com? All this business is going to be in our show notes. Someone else else is redoing um, Half-Life 2 on Unreal Engine 4. (laughs) Now, will this entire project come to completion before we finally get the Zen level in uh, Black Mesa. Yeah. Who do you think? Uh, you know, eh, this, you know, Project Lambda, it looks good. It looks really good. And they seem to have the uh, the train bit from the first Half-Life uh, started. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's still a bit rough around the edges, but uh, it's a proof of concept. And considering, let's see, uh, Black Mesa, these end levels haven't been done since that mod was originally started in 2012, 13, something like that. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, dep- it depends too, right? Because the whole, the whole deal with Black Mesa taking so long was then as they're freaking redoing the entire goddamn level. Lighting. 
and they're at, they're adding a bunch of content. So if, if these guys just do like a shaders, course, yes, shaders and lighting, man, you can't do Zen. <laughs> You've got to redo the entire lighting engine for the entire fucking well, like, thing. Listen, right? I've I've been reading the Lamentations of the Flame Princess Adventure Carcosa, and they have this whole shit about like how in the alien realm they just have colors that don't exist so you can't really describe them mm-hmm. and they got to replicate them in on like vulcan that's that's a lot of hard work man hey man sometimes you got to replicate those exist. um colors with smells mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I'm thinking they were, like i like i'm saying that i'm th- i'm thinking they really should have just called this uh yet uh yeah yabum yet another Yellow black mesa two yeah I, I agree with you yeah. on that kind of kind of a but hey man half-life 2 remakes so it's, hot uh, right now it's half it's just og half-life not half-life or whatever they're gonna make yeah. two right? it's y'all. y'all yet another half-life oh oh <laughs> Spe- speaking of which uh entire entire semi unrelated did you guys see that uh, freeman's mind 2 started up yes like I ago. follow Ross Scott. Uh, I followed him for many, many years. Mm-hmm. No, I, I kind of dropped off after <laughs> after uh, Freeman's Mind One, and then I found out, oh, there's like ten episodes of this shit. Yeah, Freeman. Right. Uh, I only know I came into that very late, like two years ago, and I that was a day I watched um, all mm. that. Very, very well done. Um, bad news: Paragon never came into came to Linux, uh, and I guess worse news for people that are playing it. Uh, Epic's like, fuck this noise, peace out, we're going to focus on the engine, and uh, Fortnite's making us all the money. But they, yep. they kind of did us a solid, though. Oh, absolutely. I think and I, I think this is less doing a solid and more of like a smart business move, uh, given the position that Epic is in. So for those of you who don't know, uh, after, so Paragon got shit canned because uh, that game tanked, and so um, they have, uh, what was, was it? Uh, 12, uh, they, the game had a $12 million development budget, so they created a lot of high-quality assets that they're just going to release for free now, which is a very interesting move because I, th- I think what it is is now that they can, they're in a position where people are actually using UE4 uh, and they can start collecting some licensing fees, hey, here's a bunch of high-quality assets that you developers can use. Go make some games. We're going to hope that it gets big, and then we're going to start taking our 5 10 20% off the top and, you know, we we sped up your development uh, process because here's a bunch of nice looking uh, art assets. Man, uh, I, I got a lot of faith whatever. in this, but I, I can already hear. Um, I'm just going to say there's going to be tools for converting the models for Unity. I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, no, 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 here, 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 here's where the interesting money is. Where, where, where's going to when? When are they going to have all these assets show up on the Leadwork store? <laughs> uh, Saint Never's Day. No, nope, the not afternoon. No, nope. uh, <laughs> listen, man. That uh, pump action captain, the fucking spider, made it in the goddamn lens. Yeah, it did. So we know it's possible. <laughs> but it's uh, one thing I'm wondering is how long it will take someone to make a uh, asset flip of Paragon and just push it out on Steam. Call it Renegade. I can't. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of just want to, you know, since Epic themselves wouldn't support Linux uh, with Paragon, maybe uh, Asset Flipper ninety three fifty four, whatever it is this time around, uh, they will push out a uh, Linux export from the Unreal Engine four. It's like, oh look, now you can play Paragon on Linux. Mm-hmm. Huh. Great, so so no one on Linux will be playing it. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> They'll Again, be playing it. I, uh, you know, I, I don't think they killed Paragon just because it was doing bad. I think I genuinely do believe it's because Fortnite just. I mean, it surpassed PUBG recently. So. Oh yeah. Well, no, well, and that, that was the other thing too. For uh, Paragon came out when like Overwatch was really really big, and everyone was into like these action MOBA things, and the people's taste shifted towards the sort of open world fuck around death simulator. Mm-hmm. That is the PUBGs, That is the Fortnites, et cetera. So mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think it was just poor timing. They, um, yeah, it, it, it was, that's basically it. Poor timing. Oh, Hey, we released our game that everyone likes this genre of, but everyone's now on the new shit, man. Uh, a little uh, bit of an am aside. I, I I'll go ahead no. and throw the, in. There is the that wrong. crow team is also working with Devolver Digital to build their own survival fuckery game. They, yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. I gave that a retweet. See, I, I, I'd, I'd be interested in that just because, like, oh, come on, serious Sam crossover. I just want to see some freaking <laughs> walkers with machine gun arms chopping on cigars. Nope. That's what I want to see. Don't. Mm-hmm. I, I want to catch them all, man. 
All right. Uh, well, Poke MMO. This is not the first one that um, they've made, but this is a one that's available on Linux. It's Java based, so Ven is super excited about that. <laughs> it is. It's a. It's the Pokemon MMO. It basically takes. Uh, it sort of re-implements the underlying engine underneath the Pokemon games. Uh, you require all of the ROMs from very from all the uh, Nintendo DS gens and uh, one of the Game Boy Advance gens to um, make the entire thing work because uh, it steals all the assets and like actual gameplay. And based on what I've seen is from playing it for about twenty minutes, is it's straight up Pokemon except everyone else is there too, and you can talk to them and challenge them to Pokemon battles and so on and so forth. So it's pretty neat. Um, if you if you uh, have a way to legitimately get all the ROMs, you can play this very very shortly. It has a nice little GUI written in Java. It all it all works. Um, every every four chairs are mixed with the working once you get all the prerequisites in place. But so is this like Pokemon I mean, if, Go for people with crippling social anxiety? <laughs> no, because there's lo- there's far less physical activity involved. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's also uh, is having you. Basically, having that requirement for you to already have the ROMs, is that their way of s- trying to skirt around uh, Nintendo's copyright lawyers? Uh, yeah, because they use the assets from the games. So From the actual games, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, the, 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 actual, the actual overworld is custom, but like the, the mechanics, the stats, and the monsters and whatnot are all from... The games, like I said, it's neat. It's uh, if it's, it's a thing, if you're into Pokemon, if you have no friends and want to play with some people, that is a way to do well, it. I also guess that up- you, you were around some very like minded motherfuckers if you tracked this shit down and ported your ROMs and you play, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and like like I said, there there are there have been a couple of these that have been in circulation. This is just one that's available on Linux and doesn't require stuff right like on. wine, which is so, nice. Uh, something I ran across, just like, oh wow, that's a thing. Maybe we should, for once, use our power for good. <laughs> then I was overruled, but I still snuck it in this uh, show notes anyway. Is, it's uh, up there at the top. <laughs> Libre Game Wiki. It's a thing, man. Just it, it's just an encyclopedia with nine hundred and sixty five games listed in this business man so it's really good and i just want to let people know about it i mean i don't really have a lot to say other than it did give me an idea it's complete crazy sauce this is banana republic type shit um an open source a steam type client for open source games this is i don't know so no way I'm, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure some French idiot isn't working on this right now. That, that's not completely done in Python and Nope. <laughs> no, it's done. It's, uh, dude, it's done. It's it could done be in Jython and dude, dude, it's Jython and JRuby. Come I want on, client side yeah, Java. Dude. All right. It could be run in Electron, and it could be the itch.io client thing. There's also or, Game or Jolt. <laughs> or, or it could be it could be God Galaxy, where it's just made out of vapor. The one nice thing about uh, this little <laughs> website, though, is right right up at the top. Uh, they have um, recently announced or recently released games. So if you want to see if a mm-hmm. particular game you're following has an update, you can just go find them all in one nice little place. It's it's a nice little wiki. I hope uh, the people keep on maintaining it. Well, and I, uh, yeah. places like this yeah. need a little attention, a little bit of traction, because you know now that we do have Steam and we have Gog and stuff like that. I mean, Jordan yes. and I used to constantly peruse sites very similar to this, trying to come up with four minutes worth of content each week. and uh, That we could expand to 20 minutes by Beckering. Right. Just like stretch the hell out of it and see if we could try to make a show. Sometimes it worked, most of the time it didn't. But yeah, man, uh, I'd like to see some type of client for open source GPL. But then you mm-hmm. got to go through who's going to host it, repositories and all that fun stuff. So uh, that's going to do all that right. for the news. Coming up next, it's time to uh, to put on your graduation cap and grab your ruler and go smack someone. I completely lost where the hell I was going with this analogy. We're, we're reviewing a student game, Trials of the Gauntlet. Stay tuned. Thanos may be in possession of the Infinity Gauntlet. But we got one better. We got the chairs, and the chairs are more powerful than the Infinity Stones combined. We'll put this guy through his own trial of the gauntlet. This is developed by uh, Broken Dinosaur Studios, developed on the Unity engine. 
as a student project. Uh, you may remember them from the hate mail section a couple weeks ago. Anyways, what is it? In Trials of the Gauntlet, you wake up in the courtyard of a steampunked mansion and your arm replaced is with, uh, with an electric grappling hook. You must use your new arm to solve puzzles, traverse the mansions, and fight your way to the top of the clock tower where you confront the mad scientist who did this to you. The devs did send us some keys for this. Uh, good on them for that. And if you don't know what this segment is, this is chair QA edition. As Ven has so succinctly put it in the show notes, we are here to rip your game apart. It's where we uh, take a game, we talk about it, we play it a little bit, maybe do a bit of quality assurance that uh, the developers may, should have done before they brought it to market. And we give you a little chair based on some, uh, or give you a chair based on some scores. Just one chair. There you go. You one chair. I, I'm 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 fucking drunk today, man. Leave me alone. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. And we got our categories of doom. Thanks with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let's kick this off. Ven, how did this Unity game fare on Ubuntu? It's Unity, motherfucker. How do you expect, man? And Unity works out of the box on Linux. You have to be exceptionally fucktarded in order to make something not work correctly with Unity on Linux. Speaking of exceptionally fucktarded, um, the first thing you might notice with the fucktardedness is the Unity screen of Nope. I have not seen that in a while. Uh, yet, there it is. Minus two chairs off the bat. Um, there's not a cursor in the main menu. Yes, there is a single fucking pixel in the main menu. 3840 by 2160. There's not a cursor in the main menu. Okay, it took me a minute to figure out that there was even a way to get into game proper. Speaking of cursors, it'll go flying off your screen. It doesn't lock in windowed mode. Nope. Nope. And you see, if you're watching the video version, there's a grappling mechanic to this. So you can imagine the fuckery that causes in any possible way, basically making for me, at least the game completely unfucking playable. Won't you? Cause I've died. I'm dead inside. <laughs> you died. We're, we're all dead inside, man. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, the It doesn't lock your cursor in full screen either, which is really annoying when you have separate nope. screens. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit more in the controls and fun segments because I have some interesting anecdotes about this. Regardless, um, because of that Unity screen, and nope, and because of the myriad technical issues, the game does, in fact, work. You can play it to some degree, <laughs> so it'll get two chairs for me on Fedora 2664-bit, the i7-6700K GTX 980. Pedro. Yeah, no, it, it, not only can you play it to some degree, you can actually finish it, but more on that later. Yeah, no, uh, I saw uh, Ven's notes about, oh, there's no cursor. Yeah, there is. It's a two by two teeny, teeny, tiny little square. Even in a 1080p screen, you can see that, oh, look, there's something there. Uh, but yeah, it is there, uh, but the Unity screen of Nope in 2018 gets you dinged an automatic two chair. So over here on Ubuntu 1604, uh, with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080, it gets a two chairs. All right, well, that's one chair for Mix with the Working. <laughs> it's not, not a very good start. <laughs> Shiny and sounds-wise, this is, I mean... Uh, ven we were talking about this in the uh, in the pre pre super show shows and mm -hmm. but you got it right this looks like something off it looks like a high res version of like a game you would find on like the amiga or the bbc micro or some some other game that would have been distributed yeah, on I, was going to, I think i said an apple 2 e color or something like that so I, yeah some some yeah. something like that but it, it it's it's evocative of that which i guess it works for the genre of the game it's supposed to be because this was based on an assignment to design a metroidvania game which it clearly did so Good on them for that. I mean, it gets the job done. There's nothing particularly egregious. There's no random graphical glitches or anything like that. And there's nothing really noteworthy about the soundscape here other than there's maybe some beep boops. Huh? I don't know. I couldn't hear it over the yeah. sound of me grinding my teeth. <laughs> so uh, anyways, this, this gets two chairs for me for the shining sounds. Give it to me, Pedro. Yeah, it's uh, it's got very little in the way of uh, audiovisual feedback when you take damage from enemies. If you hit the spikes, there's uh, the usual recoil and you get pushed back a little bit. But if you get hit by an enemy, you're, uh, especially the bosses, uh, your HP bar just drops a little bit and that's it. You get no other visual feedback for that. It's... Kind of meh, the background music 
as you first started and you listened to it in the um, in the main menu, okay, it doesn't sound terrible, but then you realize that it's just a very short loop and it just keeps looping. So it gets a little bit annoying. It, it It's serviceable. Again, you can finish the game. So two chairs, it's a, it's a passing score, right? Fair enough, man. Listen, I'm not even going to say this looks good for a first effort. This is Place Art Plus, and that's kind of being generous. Your color palette, what you're seeing right there, is brown mixed with varying shades of dark. Kind of looks like a turret, more than that in the fun section. Uh, you know, it has some, like, wannabe chiptune synth bullshit going on in the background. It's there. It's also available as DLC as part of the soundtrack, 99 cents. Oh, fuck me. Um, and the dude kind of makes a noise when he swings. And you're just looking at some of this, the level coloring back there with a the bookcase. It's color blindness. And uh, also, Alboy Cape. Kind of ripped that off. I'm just saying you did. I'll, I'll give it a solid two. Uh, that's two chairs for shiny and sounds. How about some controls, Pedro? You played it with a controller, believe it or not. Uh, well, I... Uh... Ven also, I, I checked the show notes, uh, and Ven said, oh, it's not picking up on the controller. So I gave it the 8-bit do here, and it did pick up on it. The mappings were all wrong, but it picked up on it, and if you can figure out what the hell the Unity scream of nope is telling you that the controls do, you can uh, rebind things, so I can't really dig it to two chairs, but it it's already lost one. Uh, also, this uh, this brain made by Haywire Go Game. <laughs> At one point, I just lost. I, I didn't have any anti coordination because I didn't know what hell kind of button I needed to press to progress because I was just so very confused, which is admittedly very easy to do. Um, it's fucky. I guess that's the best way I have to describe it. it even if you're playing with the keyboard and mouse, even though they bound the uh, the WASD keys correctly. If you're playing with the directional arrows and you hit the up directional arrow, expecting it to reel yourself in on the grappling hook, it doesn't out of the box. So it gets three chairs because, again, I managed to finish the game, so it's it's serviceable. How does this game control? It fucking doesn't, <laughs> man. It does not support the Areola <laughs> controller. It does not support the steamy goodness that Gaben's nipples give. Um, that kind of sucks. It's kind of bullshit. And I am not going to try to reconfigure something with the Unity Scream. No, this is 2018, motherfuckers. So you get two chairs right from that. And as I mentioned, just with the makes with the working section, it doesn't lock your durable input. Therefore, it would be really horrible if this game relied on a mechanic that caused you to swing around your durable and use it. Wait a minute. It fucking does. Yeah, it does, Brad. <laughs> so yeah, fuck this noise. Technically, I could play it, so I can't give it zero cheers. I'm going to give you one, just because I can't give you zero. Fuck that, man. What the hell? Oh, yeah, no, the, the swinging mechanic is just, like, hot fucking garbage. Oh, man. And I'm a fan of Bionic Commando. I played a lot of it back mm -hmm. in the day. Yes. I like the platformer swingy. Yeah, or my, mine was on the Game Boy, because that was, that was what I had. I didn't have a NES growing up, but regardless. I, it's Was that Tesla or principles. Hitler? <laughs> Yeah, it it, it uh, was Adolf Tesla. <laughs> yes, All right. two, 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 two times tessellation. <laughs> there you go, tesselation. <laughs> That's show title. Anyways, <laughs> and, um, yeah. So the the swinging mechanic here is just complete terrible or completely terrible. Uh, the reeling is either hypersensitive or doesn't reel you up at all. And harping on uh, or piggybacking on Ven's point about it not locking your gerbil. If you have separate X screens and your mouse goes outside the confines of the game, the mm -hmm. controls just completely fuck up and you have to straight up restart the game if you want any semblance of usability. I'll give it two because they work, kind of, sort of. But really, I should have given them one. Oh, man. So... So that, that, that's, uh, that's two chairs for the control segment. And to finally put a bow on it. Fun. Ben, did you have fun? Two chairs, Ben. Everything's so bad. The... the controls are sluggish the, they move slow the animation's bad the controls are just like refried ass level design would make a three-year-old with fucking mario maker look like a flying spaghetti monster damn master a protege uh, prodigy man you know what check it out man as a student project in all seriousness it's neat it's not bad for a first effort you know uh 
out of the box, like, hey, this is the thing we made for a project. Cool. The thing is, the, 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 the thing is, Brad, Brad, you put a fucking student project up for sale on the Steam store, contributing to the endless waves of bullshit we have to wade through on a daily basis. You spent a whopping three months on this, sons, and it shows. One chair. Yeah, I'm going going back to the whole student game thing. I mean, they, they they said this from the outset, so adjust your expectations accordingly. However, as, as as I said, I played a lot of Bionic Commando in the day. So back in the day, so I'm used to this style of game. But when the entire core mechanic of like how you move around in your platformer just doesn't work well, you're gonna have some serious problems. Period. You gotta have like good fundamental gameplay. To make it at all entertaining. Period. Um, yeah, no, that's the swinging is terrible, especially when they're like, "Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta swing and catch in Spider-Man." No, that that does not happen on the first, second, or fifth attempts. It takes several attempts. And um, I actually, I made some decent progress. I got through the first boss. I made my way back across the thing where you had to jump up, but there was one jump I just couldn't get because my hands were just not having it. <laughs> so I closed the game, walked away for a little bit, came mm -hmm. back, and using that fucking microscopic pixel of a cursor, <laughs> accidentally hit the new game button, and all of a sudden, I got zapped all the way back to the beginning of the game, to which, to which I said, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care anymore. Peace out, y'all. Yeah. So here, here's the deal. Like, if 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 this if this were if this were like a, if I were a teacher grading this as an assignment, I'd maybe give it a B. It displays like an understanding of the fundamentals of like Metroidvania game design, which is what the assignment was. However, school's out, son. This is a chair acquisition, and you get one. Honestly, uh, adjusting expectations. Uh, well, having my expectations adjusted as they were. I enjoyed the 40 odd minutes it took me to beat the game. Uh, I guess in a world full of big open sandboxes, it's just a teeny tiny little self contained story with a little platformy, well, a very fucky platformer uh, attached to it. Um, is, uh, it's, it's refreshing. Let's go with that. Uh, there are plenty of bugs. The swinging physics, as Jordan has already mentioned, are absolutely fucking horrible. Uh, but it didn't overstay its welcome. But I'm guessing that's part of the whole, yeah, it takes you less than 50 minutes to beat the game. But I did actually regret the 50 or 48 minutes it took me, according to Steam, to beat this game. I would honestly like to play more of this with better controls, better feedback, better audio bits, better graphics, and a hell of a lot less buggy. I'll give it two chairs, but it doesn't really matter. I think you're being overly generous. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, that's... Well, that's <laughs> so, someone messed up the math, because that's one chair for fun, not two chairs, Pedro. And that's one Oops. chair for <laughs> Trials of the Gauntlet. It's okay, Pedro. We don't expect you to use your brain on Linux Gamecast. We just expect you to talk out of hey your man, ass. Hey, man, I'm going to say um, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, that's going to be a solid note, but it's $1.99. That's the thing. I just, the only thing that really grinds my gears is there's nothing wrong with Babby's first collision detection game. Uh, what is wrong is Babby's first collision detection game available on Steam for $1.99. That's the fucked up part. Yeah, like maybe, maybe th throw this up for free on an itch.io. <laughs> give you like, oh, hey, check out our game. Give us your feedback. We want to like do better at game design. That probably would have been better than putting it up for sale on Steam. Uh, yeah. I mean, good, good on, good on them. They kind of, they kind of knew what they were getting into when they sent us this. And, and do keep in mind, so this is coming spider. from three grown adults wearing wizard robes. <laughs> On a Saturday night. <laughs> LGC yeah, cares. Hey, I, I, I take exception to that. This is a summoner's robe, not a wizard's <laughs> robe. Summoner Nerd. <laughs> it's, I want to uh, be the warlock. $1.99 uh, or £1.70. And you can finish it well within the refund window. So if you want to be that guy, you can always refund it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
you absolutely can go take that dollar 99 and go buy yourself a pepsi coming up next oh my god we were wrong about the smock zero we have one in our hands right now stay tuned and see what it actually looks like Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's about time we wrap this up because it's, uh, well, uh, it hasn't been a particularly long show, but since Daylight Savings Time kicked in halfway through this for me, it feels like a really long show. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's actually nice to have a teeny tiny Speak little... Speak for yourself, thing. Pedro. <laughs> Jesus, have you heard you? <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, I've been uh, waffling. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, I'll let your finish his spiel in a moment. You can get to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button. You fill out the form. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly to deliver some of that good old hate mail or some relationship advice if you'd like Jordan to finish his spiel all over your back. Um, <laughs> it's easy enough. We ask for your name, your email address, a subject, and the message proper. Then you have to uh, fill out the little capture thingy. It's easy enough. Just to let us know what we got wrong, what we got right. Well, maybe not what we got right. No one wants to admit that someone else was right on the internet, right? Uh, I said right way too many times then. Right. Left. <laughs> What's... I'll tell I'll tell you I'll tell you what's left though. What's left is uh, we got some hate mail from Lex Walker. And he's talking about the schmuck. The Zwach. I don't know. The Schmuck Z still hasn't had an actual working prototype until today. Those gameplay of benchmark videos was recorded from development boards, which they fondly called final hardware. Prototype t- PCBs they presented at Embedded World 2018 are non-working actually because of bugs. Uh, they have to wait for a new revised PCB to be delivered and tested, which means another delay. The case was shown to be 3D printed, thus no actual final definite product casing. And without a working actual prototype, they definitely cannot test the battery life. Thus, take everything they advertise with a big old grain of rock salt. There are lots of other problems as well. One example would be Windows 10 licensing. They also have not decided on the battery supply yet. Maybe they should use a bunch of... Um, Surplus Galaxy Note 7 batteries. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Note cheap. 7 batteries. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, this basically confirms what we know already. The It's vaporware. Yeah. They're, they're, I think at the end of it, they're going to produce a run of, like, 10,000. They're going to sell, like, maybe 200 units. And then the rest are going to be buried next to the Atari cartridges <laughs> in the middle of the desert. I don't. I honestly don't think they'll ever do a run of these, man. I mean, you know, you. this is... Not from like hardcore people that are like wicked crazy enthusiasts like with the Pandora. No. <laughs> I mean, those, those guys wanted to make a handheld, uh, a cool little device, even though a small batch, wicked expensive, but they were going to see it through. These seem like people that, you know, kind of want to like trigger, you know, the money penguin. Oh, yeah. And this has been going on for like three or four years. It's not come to fruition. And I want uh, Lex Walker to... That's just what he says. I'm or she or it or I don't know, whatever. Use your pronouns, Vin. Um, if that holds out to be true, what I'm reading right there is 100% like, yeah, it seems legit. It's about that. Because I remember um, last year I did a little digging on our Wednesday show. And we said this before. This has got a very sordid history with the uh, mm-hmm. people behind the Smash Z and other incarnations. And the the one uh, sort of kind of working thing that they had on display a couple of years back was actually running an Intel uh, processor. So that wasn't representative in any way, shape, or form mm-hmm. of what they actually set out to do originally, which was to have an AMD APU and run SteamOS. I guess they just dropped the whole SteamOS thing and just to hit it. It's going to run Windows just... Yeah. That is a very good point, though, Jordan. What do you think about that? Uh, the Windows licensing. That that's. Oh yeah, no, that, that that's 100 percent going to drive the price up. I know Microsoft has some bulk licensing deals. Oh man, could you imagine like what kind of fucking bloatware the Smock Z would have to come with <laughs> to actually make that worthwhile? Oh, come on, man. Fucking Norton power antivirus. CD uh, yeah. Yeah. You fucking fucking Norton murder your computer antivirus. <laughs> uh, some freaking PDF authoring software and a trial copy of Microsoft Office. Oh, right, right. Yes. Office 365, one year free of uh, because that's what you're going to do. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? 
Um, give, give, give us money, Microsoft. We just we just spent like the last fucking five minutes plugging your shit. Right, Microsoft commercials. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I listen. I hope we're completely wrong, and this thing actually shows up one day. And uh, fuck it. I mean, if this thing comes out and it's even remotely what it is, and it supports Linux, I'll fucking buy one. Maybe I'll just give it away to a listener or whatever. Because um, dude, hold on, hold on to that. It's gonna be some Atari like Link shit, man. <laughs> Good luck with that. Let's cue the music. You can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Time. Send us some hate mail, some hot, steamy, sexy hate mail. You can do that. Like Pedro said, you can also leave a YouTube comment if you want to chime in like that business. I'm Ben Stone on the Twitters with the tweets, not on the Facebooks, because everyone, including um, old Elon Musk, is deleting their Facebooks accounts. Uh, we still have one if you want to go visit it. Which, probably not for very much longer, because last time I logged yeah. in, I don't know about you, Pedro, like, you must create your own personal Facebook account. Mm -hmm. Like, eat a bag of dicks, that's not happening. Anyway, uh, plus Finstone, Google Plus, J-Baby. I'm Jordan Spung. My Facebook page is just a bunch of Twitter posts, that because I linked them years and years and years ago. Don't try and find me on Facebook, I'll murder you. You can find me on Google Plus at plus Jordan Spung, or Twitter at The Burning Fool. Yes, by all means, uh, do try to add me on Google+. Plus. I may miss you because recently I've been hit with a torrent of spam bots. Uh, at one point, I actually had 900 followers. It's gone back down to 700 and something. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, by all means, do add me there. If I see you and I like the stuff what you post, I'll follow you back. Same applies for Twitter. That's at unaccounted for F-O-U-R. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's Twitter. I need to use it more. Well, I guess at the end of the day, um, well, Pedro kind of learned that Jordan and I have been buying bot followers for you and removing them just to fuck with your emotions for the past four years. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, I think it's a sound investment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of our hobby. We're, um, <laughs> pretty simple people, but, you know, and this is, just, we're, we're, we're simple guys. We have simple pleasures. Whatever. Roll the credits. But bots and bots. 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 Bot. Bot. Isn't that coming out like on Blu-ray or some shit? Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll watch it again. I went to the theater to see the damn thing, so it might as well. Man, I, I gotta. I gotta. I, I gotta go download the Despecialized Edition because apparently they made a, they had a new release recently. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, I'm just waiting to get paid so I can uh, get my Netflix on and uh, watch some Netflix. Netflix. Carbon. Ne yes. Netflix. <laughs> the Netflix. You're gonna get them before. Listen, We're looking at all the it, beautiful it, party it, patrons. It, 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 They're gorgeous. Ah uh, shit! We got Frank Buckos coming up. Where they at? Yeah, Where they at? There that, they that, 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 la that lady investigator from Alter Carbon, though. Woof. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm only like episode five in ish. Okay. Okay. I got an idea what's I, going I on. Can tell you, uh, I, I, I can tell you right now there are two. There are two reasons to really love that series. <laughs> two very poignant reasons. <laughs> Dynafire, everyone. We love you. See you next week. Five dudes.